Is this working? Hi, traveling therapist. Going over to my phone to see how this is streaming. Let's see. Welcome to the second night of the Traveling Therapist Extravaganza. How is everybody? I see some people here. Hi, Indiana. <laughs> is that your real name, Indiana? I saw you posting today and I was just wondering if that's a Facebook name or a real name because I love it. <laughs> Let's see, new comment. Hi, guys. How is everybody? How are we doing tonight? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Yes, it is. I love that name. That's amazing. <laughs> so I saw your post today. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? How's everybody doing? So what did you think of the extravaganza last night? I think, Cheryl, you were there. Oh, Indiana says, I've never been to Indiana, though. <laughs> are you a male or female, Indiana? I'm not sure. I can't tell by your profile picture. That's funny. You've never been there. Have you ever wanted to go? <laughs> so how's everybody doing tonight? We've got a great lineup tonight. I'm so excited. Let me just pull up my notes here. Oh, female. Oh, wonderful. That's even better. I love that. Oh my gosh. Indiana. What a cool name. So welcome to the second night of the Traveling Therapist Extravaganza. So tonight we're going to have Andrea Shipley. We're going to have Janine Wolf and Jen Hyatt, and they're all going to join us at 15 minute increments throughout the hour. Uh, oh, thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl said she loved the extravaganza from last night. That's awesome. I'm so glad you were here. Um, what are you doing, Cheryl? Are you trying to um, start traveling some more? I think you're in Chicago, right? If I'm remembering that correctly. What is going on with you? What are you doing? And all of you guys that are watching, I want to check in, just say hello, and just see where everybody is right now. Are you guys traveling right now? Are you traveling and working? Or are you at home and just wanting to be traveling? Like, let me know where you are right now. We've got about 15 minutes before our first guest comes in, Andrea Shipley. She is amazing. You guys are going to love her. She, um, well, I'll let her tell you about herself. She's a, all of these people are course contributors, but she is really cool and inspiring. So I'm excited to see her at 615. Indiana says home wanting to be traveling. Yeah. So what's keeping you back, Indiana, from being able to go? I'm just curious. Um, the, the dream life worksheet, I don't know if you guys have looked at that or started working on that, helps to identify some roadblocks, some things that might be holding you back and kind of helps you set some goals to bust through those roadblocks. So if you want to share them here, I'd love to hear what's keeping you, keeping you there. Hi, Kristen. Tuning in from home in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. We're getting ready to head up to Asheville after we leave Florida. Kathleen just arrived in Istanbul after 22 hours of travel, heading to Kos tomorrow. Oh my gosh, Kathleen, we had to cancel our um, our cruise to Greece and Turkey. I'll message you and fill you in. But yeah, we were supposed to be leaving Monday to go to Greece and Turkey on a cruise, but we're not going now, unfortunately. But Kathleen's really cool. If anybody wants to know anything about Turkey, traveling there, working there, she does it all the time. So she's a great person to talk to. Kathleen Coughlin. She's in the chat here. Yeah, Kathleen, drop your group too, if you'd like, if you'd like to share in case anybody wants to reach out to you. And then let's see, Cheryl says, yes, learning how to be a traveling therapist. <laughs> Yay. And then we have, I'm Eagles. I hope I'm saying that right, Eagles. I love that. What a pretty name. And I'm home and wanting to travel more. Awesome. Let us know how we can help if there's any roadblocks getting in your way. Um, Indiana says, at the moment, family's keeping her there. That was a big one for me. That was a tough one to just say, all right, I'm just going to like leave leave my whole family and just go travel the world, basically. Um, it's It's been tough. 
Uh, Kathleen says, enjoy Asheville. You need to schedule and come visit us soon. Yes, I know. I do. I was really looking forward to it. I was bummed that it got canceled. Um, and let's see. Yes, said right. Oh, great. Thank you. I pronounced your name correctly. Eglis. Thank you. Elizabeth, hello there. Just moved to Mexico and starting private practice online. Oh, awesome. How's it going? Elizabeth Abroad is her name. How's it going? Yeah, we've got, I don't know, you're probably totally prepared, but the podcast, the Traveling Therapist podcast, we have quite a few episodes around people living in, working in Mexico. If you need any help, but you might already have already figured all that out already, Elizabeth. Nice, nice to see everybody. Now, Janine has just entered the waiting room, but she's not scheduled till 6.30. So I'm going to let her in, see if she wants to hang out with me and Andrea. Let me, let me let her in real quick. Hi, Janine. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm, I'm live in the group right now. I'm You're here. live. I'm not hearing you. Uh -oh. Hang on just one second. There we go. Can you hear me? I can't hear you yet. Okay, I was just telling the group you're actually early. I think you're supposed I, to come at six thirty. <laughs> I know. So is someone else here already? I no. Was just, oh, oh, I was just you gonna welcome. You're, I was gonna say you're welcome to just hang out if you want yeah. to. I'd yeah, love I'll that. Just hang out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd love that. I'm so glad to see you and happy birthday. Thank you. Yesterday <laughs> was just, Janine's birthday. Oh, yesterday it was. Yes. <laughs> um, should I just turn off my video for now? Whatever you want. You could sit here with me if you want to. We're just chit-chatting in the comments. We're just talking about asking everybody where they're from. What are they doing? Okay. Um, let's see. Stacy says she's from Huntsville, Alabama. She's in private practice. She wants to travel more. So what, what is keeping you guys from doing it? Um, Indiana said that she's, family's keeping, holding her back right now. Is there anything holding you guys back that we could talk about. Janine's here too. She's, she's great with this stuff. So we could talk about roadblocks and she's here with us. <laughs> yeah. So we're, um, we're just checking in. I do want to remind you guys, if you haven't already to check out the bingo board, let me, let me drop the link here in case you guys haven't seen that the bingo board and the worksheet, the dream life worksheet, which I think is really helpful, especially for those of you that are just starting to want to travel, but haven't done it yet haven't started with it. It kind of like talks you through roadblocks or things that are, are getting in the way. Okay. So Kristen says one thing is finances is a big one for her. That's so funny. Janine and I did a podcast episode <laughs> around, you know, there's this idea that if you travel, you can't work and travel. Like you're supposed to just go travel. And there's like even judgments around like, what are you doing? You're traveling and working. You're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we say, well, you have to. I mean, you have to, you have to figure out sometimes how to see clients while you're on the road so you can still have an income coming in. Yeah. So I hear you. I hear you, Kristen. And um, let's see. Oh, Megan's here. <laughs> Megan just popped in the comments. She said, combine your love of travel with hosting retreats. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Megan's going to pop in tomorrow night, actually, and talk about that, um, how she's managed to do that. She's running retreats all over the world, culinary retreats, therapist retreats. Um, I've been to a couple of them myself. So that's another way you can do that. If you're into that kind of thing, you can run retreats. You can do it for whatever population you want to serve. And you can also travel the world while you do it, which is pretty amazing. Janine and I were talking about that too, getting some retreats off the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, and then finances, as she was saying, finances are a big one for her. That That is a big one. And, you know, I, I work with people and kind of coach people around this stuff sometimes. Sometimes it's looking at, you know, if you're on insurance panels, are you on a bunch of low paying insurance panels? Is it time to maybe get off those panels? Um, if you're not getting enough referrals, like how can we help you like spruce up your referrals to help you get more people coming in? Mm -hmm. um, what are some other ways, Janine? Can you think of any well, other? You know, um, the, hybrid, the hybrid model that we talked about some in the podcast is that yeah. it's like what Kim is doing is she moved completely online and which I did as well, but she's also moved yeah. like into Airbnb. So she's living yeah. <laughs> on the road and traveling. And that's not the only way to be a traveling therapist. The way mm -hmm. I like to do it is I can take more frequent vacations 
if I can work some while I'm there so I can strategically say like, okay, these couple of mornings, I'm going to see some clients so that I'm not, because you get that double whammy, you're losing income and you're spending money when you go on vacation. Exactly. And this way you're not losing all that income and you can do it more frequently possibly, or maybe take some long weekends by doing that. So there's ways mm -hmm. to do it without committing full on. Like yeah. I, I, I would, I would love to do that. It's not, it, it's not something that I can do in my life right now, but right. you have inspired me to be more um, open about the possibilities of traveling and still working and maintaining your income. Absolutely. And the other way that I do it, Janine does it, Megan's on here, Megan does it is developing multiple income streams, you know, so you're not tied down to just, just like one-to-one -one model with clients where you've got to see 30 clients in a week and you have no time to do anything, even if you are traveling. Um, that's been a game changer for me. I mentioned yesterday, some of you guys might already know, I've got eight different income streams that all bring in money, you know, to help support basically my traveling obsession. You know, I just, how much money can I bring in so I can go on cool excursions and live in different places and, and eat at fancy restaurants and, and feel comfortable in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and not have to see a million clients a week. Yeah. You know, but that's been really helpful. Yeah. And I think so much of what you are teaching and, and I encourage people in my group as well is that we have to really bust out of those norms that we were taught in grad school about the way we should practice and how we should. I mean, it was all about the clients and prioritizing them and doing whatever is best for them, but we can't practice sustainably that way. We have to put our needs into the equation. And that might mean taking more frequent breaks or having long weekends or doing a little bit of work while you're getting away so that you can afford to get away and still pay your bills. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Let's see. We've got some other comments here. Um, let's see. Uh, I would love, a, I would love a non-therapy related gig to supplement my income. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My, my gigs right now are all therap therapist facing. So I'm not doing any therapy really. I mean, I do coaching around like insurance billing and the traveling stuff, but you know, I wanted to get away from clients too. I was so burnt out from that. Um, let's see. So I would love, and then Ann Farrell, like it says, oh, hi, Ann. Hi, she Anne. says, yes, Kim, you, you were for sure an inspiration. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. I Ann's living the life too. She is. I know. I was going to say, Ann, you are travel. too. <laughs> And lives in a like what an RV and they travel around and and and's an inspiration too. So if anybody wants to know about RV living, she's the lady to talk to about that for sure. Absolutely. Um, and let's see. Elizabeth says roadblocks for me starting a private practice from scratch and doing it all online. Yes, I guess lack of information and resources. Not until now. Uh, not having anyone in my network that has actually done this. It feels lonely and daunting. I'm glad I came across the Traveling Therapist podcast, learning loads. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I've got a lot to say about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, I'm glad Janine's here, actually, because of the lonely part. She's she'll we'll, we'll talk about Janine and what she does and what her contribution to the course was in a little while. But, um, you know, she's all about like seeking peer support you know, while you're on the road or in your private practice, your online practice. So it's not so lonely because it, it, it is lonely for sure. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely come back to that in a little while. Um, uh, lack of information and resources. Yeah. I'm glad you're here because we're going to provide that. Um, Amber Lida, I don't know if you know who Amber Lida is, but she is a total inspiration. She's the one that got me started with this whole thing, um, be, having an online practice back in 2018. Um, you know, I, I didn't even know it was a thing until I ran across her online therapist group. I was like, oh my God, what is this? These people are traveling and working um, online. They could do anything. And it just was so exciting for me. So Amber lighted the online therapist group. She has a program called step-by-step Step that teaches you how to become an online therapist. I think it's open right now, taking enrollments, I believe. I think, she's, check built, the I think she's doing the wait list for enrollments right now. Oh, okay. She's got a wait list. So, so that's a great person to talk to. Um, let's see. And the, the non-therapy related stuff. So one of the prizes we're actually giving away, Megan Smith Gunnell is giving away one, an, um, a free Thrive School. So she's got these Thrive Schools that teach uh, different models to help you like upload or upgrade your practice 
to scale it up, to make more income and see less client time. So she's got a lot of programs too that um, are available. And let's see. Oh, and Megan says, and Ann Farrell Leggett, my dream. Megan, I didn't know that was your dream to travel in an RV. That's awesome. Um, and then let's see, is a traveling coach free of licensing restraints? Yes, absolutely. And Andrea is actually here. So let me pull Andrea in. She's a great person to talk to about that, Cheryl. So let me pull her in. And right. Janine, if you just want to hang, that's cool with me. Yep. Um, okay. All right, I'll turn off my mic. Okay. Let's see. Uh oh, did I let her in? Oh, no. What happened? She's gone. <laughs> oh, here she is. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Hi. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Good. So this is Janine. She actually popped in early. Her meeting's not till 6.30. So she's just hanging out with us. Um, cool. How hey. are you? I'm pretty good. I've got some cool. pop-ups on my screen that want my attention right now. So I bear with you. me a second. I hear you. I've got all kinds of notifications coming up right now. Yeah, I bet. I bet it's a lot to manage for you doing this. <laughs> it is a little bit. It can be a little stressful. Um, but I'm glad Janine's here. She always calms me down. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so everybody welcome Andrea Shipley I, I'm so glad she's here I'm so excited last night people were actually excited that you were going to be on tonight because I mentioned what you do your oh, whole really? a little bit about your story yeah they were like oh my god I don't want to miss that so I'm glad to have you here yeah sweet great yeah. thank you yeah you're welcome so would would you mind just kind of telling everybody a little bit about you and and your story because I just think it's so interesting I love what you're doing sure um so I'm in a, I'm in a school bus right now. <laughs> it's my office, but it's, it's too messy to show you much of, but I'll give you just a little, a little peek around. Um, so yeah, back in, let's see, 2017, I quit my job. I was working at a, an addiction treatment center and I loved the work, but I was just, felt stuck. I, you know, I, I liked helping people. I liked working with people, but then I would, you know, just go home at the end of the day and take like ungodly long baths to just sort of try and recuperate. And then, um, you know, I had already done a lot of traveling and I knew that I loved being out West. And I mean, I loved the East coast too. That's where I was in Virginia. Um, but I just didn't want to be there all the time, but of course I couldn't get very far, uh, with just two days a week for a weekend. And then, you know, I had to work like a full year before I got any paid time off. So it was just like a kind of a grind for, uh, a while. And so I got as creative as I could and, you know, started to kind of talk to my employer about what other possibilities there were, you know, as far as maybe me working remotely for them or something like that, uh, or having, you know, more time away or taking longer weekends. And I did end up going part-time um, just so that I could have like three-day weekends thinking that would help, you know, get me closer to what my goal was. And did that for a few years and it was, you know, good enough. I wasn't making enough money to do anything I wanted to do at that point. <laughs> so I didn't have yeah. the time or the money. Um, <laughs> And so somebody so just, just kinda, put in the comments that there's, it's like the finances are holding me back right now. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. a hard, it's a hard part of all this for sure. And it's only getting harder, but um, yeah, ultimately I, I just kind of had had enough. And, and so I kind of uh, just quit the job without having any backup. And then I just went full force into opening up my own business and started doing some life coaching while I was getting my counseling license underway. And then once I got licensed, I started building my private counseling practice. And, um, you know, so it's been a few years of that. And now I'm getting back into the life coaching aspect and, and specifically helping people design lives that fit who they are as authentic and soulful humans who want to make the most of their lives and, and, you know, have as few regrets when it's all over as possible. 
I love that so much. Yeah. Oh. I love that. So, so this, this school bus she's in, like you renovated it, right? With your dad. <laughs> I think you told me you guys did the whole thing. You bought it, you built it out and made it completely customizable for you. Well, so I, I bought it and it was already partly converted into sort of a family RV kind oh, of thing. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, so I had some foundation to work off of, which kind of helped my creative process because it was like, all right, here's what I have. Here's all the materials I ripped out of here when I when I undid what they did. How can I reuse as much as possible? And I tried to use things that I had in my house in the bus and so I've got like some built-in cabinets that I had in my house and my couch was in my house. And so there's just, you know, it was a really interesting creative project, you know, to just solve one problem at a time and think about what my life was going to be like and what I would need and, um, and how to work it all into the, the starting ground that I already had. Um, so I did a lot of the interior. My dad helped tremendously with um like electrical stuff and he put on my solar panels and like you know mounted a propane tank underneath it was a long you know we wow. worked on it for about a solid year uh, before I got on the road and we've worked on it quite a bit since then because of course <laughs> you know things break as <laughs> as they would in a house or anywhere so right yeah. now I'm actually I've been in New Mexico for about six weeks actually um nice because I've been having some mechanical issues and oh, wow. right now mechanical issues are fixed, but I have this like wiring thing. So every time I turn on the ignition, my windshield wipers are on and I can't <laughs> turn them off right now. So it's just sort of like, you just take them off and just drive it. <laughs> I can take a fuse out and, but I would much rather have them functioning. Thankfully, I, I know some people in this town and I've been able to just kind of have a little stillness and and settle a bit and enjoy this town that's been kind of uh one of my stomping grounds over the last few years so very I'm trying cool. to just embrace it for right now that's amazing and I don't know about you but for me it feels like sometimes things have to kind of go wrong so that I'll just kind of slow down because otherwise it can be kind of tiring to just be moving all the time mm-hmm yeah, we've definitely found that we've had to kind of stretch it out like two weeks here, two weeks there, instead of just going like week to week to week to week. It's just too exhausting, like having to pack up, go to a new place, get acclimated, then pack up again and go, you know, um, yeah. yeah, totally trying to find our pace with that for sure. Yeah. And yeah. then with, you know, whatever your work week looks like that, if you're only in a place for a week, that really doesn't even leave a whole lot of time to check it out. Yeah. For real. So yeah. I like going every, slower. Yeah. And every time we leave, we're like, gosh, we didn't get to do this. We didn't do this yet. We did, you know, and it's like, okay, next time we'll come back, <laughs> you know, because we're still not leaving enough time really. But then the mm -hmm. one place we did leave a ton of time, we were like, we can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that was where Gal was that? Galveston. <laughs> Galveston. Oh, yeah. That's where you were when we talked last. That's right. Because you were like right down in, um, where were you? Corpus Christi, I think. I think I was on Magnolia Beach at that point. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, somebody had a question right before you came in and I thought, well, who's, who's better to ask than Andrea? Let's see. Um, what was the question? She said, is, uh, is a traveling coach free of licensing restraints? Because you're doing both, right? You're doing therapy and you're coaching people, not just therapists, but people that want to like design their lifestyle to make it soulful and purposeful and all that stuff. So I'm just curious if you want to touch on that at all. She's, she's wondering about that. Um, licensing as for coaching are well, yeah. I mean, obviously anyone would have to just check with their own counseling licensing board. Um, I think when I called my board, this was years ago, uh, I had asked about coaching and it sounded like, it was kind of weird. Like it kind of sounded like, yeah, we'll just, if you do coaching, it's just part of your therapy work, you know, oh, is kind of what it yeah. sounded like. So mm -hmm. it didn't feel to me like that was enough of a separation. Um, and this was, this was actually maybe when I was talking to the liability insurance for my oh, counseling practice. Yeah. Um, so as far as I know, 
I, I mean, I don't think any states at this point have counts, uh, coaching licenses, uh, but there are certifications that, and some people really think highly of a couple of them, like ICF or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I don't think it's um, required, you know, from what I've heard, but, but definitely, I mean, people, you know, I guess it can give some credibility if you have some um, credentials around it, yeah. some certifications around it, but I don't, definitely don't think it's necessary. Cheryl, I think I, Cheryl in that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ended up taking a coaching course that, you know, it's not through ICF, but it did help me to just feel like, for me, it was really important to draw a solid line between therapy and coaching. And so, you know, I had to define that for myself. And I think that anyone who's trying to do this ethically is going to do that for themselves too. Um, and for me, what I ended up doing was creating two separate businesses. So I have a live explorations wellness center where I do the coaching work. And that kind of has become like a hub for any other service that goes through the wellness center. And then my counseling business sort of like rents space from the wellness center. Oh, kind nice. Of. So that's, so I've got separate insurance for both practices mm -hmm. just because yeah. it helped me to feel like I was kind of protecting myself a little bit more. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those therapists who I shouldn't say it like that because it sounds really critical, but I, I don't want for myself to, you know, do therapy across state lines and just call it coaching, even though it's still therapy. For me, it's important to really distinguish the two. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. So I hope that helps Cheryl. If you, if you have more questions, let us know. Um, Oh, when I mentioned that everybody was excited about you, Jennifer Miller Walker was like, I can't wait. Yes, Andrea. <laughs> so she's really excited that you're here. Um, oh, cool. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> somebody says, do you have a home base or are you traveling most of the time? I'm working towards getting a van and traveling. Uh, sorry, the, the, the comments keep going up and I'm losing them every time a new <laughs> comment gets put in there. So I'm like, wait a second. Uh, do you have a home base or are you traveling most of the time? I'm working towards getting a van and traveling the U.S. while having a mobile practice, still working out travel logistics. So you're, you're all yeah. in, right? Pretty much. And you're, I'm so all in. I sold my house to get the capital for the bus. So I'm all in. Uh, I'm lucky to have my parents in Virginia so I can use them as a permanent address for mail and stuff. Uh, and you know, thankfully they have a little, a little bit of land. So when I'm back in Virginia, I can, I can park the bus there. And when I have, I've just continued to live in the bus because this is my house now and this is where I'm comfortable. And, um, mm. you know, so that's been really good. And then I have a, um, a virtual mailbox for my, for my business related stuff so that everything stays confidential. And my mom's not like sending me pictures of client information and things like yeah. that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And I'm the same way. I'm all into, I'm living, we're living in Airbnbs and um, we use my mom as the mailing address for our mail in Florida. And I have yeah. a virtual mailbox back in Virginia for my insurance stuff. So mm -hmm. that's how I manage that. Thank goodness for people who are more stable than we are. Yeah. <laughs> so we can have a permanent address. <laughs> Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Somebody else says, uh, as a therapist, don't we already have the required skills to not need the certification? I understand having clear separation from therapy, but skills and experience wise, do we really need a certification? I, I don't think you need, you don't need one. Actually, the answer is no, there, there's no requirement in the United States that coaches have to have a license mm -hmm. or a certification. So yeah. is that, I don't, I don't have a coaching certification that's official, even though I did take a coaching course. So I guess maybe I could get them to print one up, but I don't, I don't need it. But I, I mean, I do, I will come back to just thinking that, you know, yes, we have the skills as a therapist, but do we, are we cultivating the skills to be really clear in how we differentiate, you know, mm -hmm. what our coaching work is from what our therapy work is? Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it's already almost 6.30. Time is flying. <laughs> so do you do you mind just sharing a little bit about what you put in the course um, just so they can know what to expect if they buy the expert's guide to becoming a traveling therapist? Yes. Uh, your to it? It's wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think it's called, it's been a while since I put it together. <laughs> I think it's called the Mindset for a Traveling Therapist. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's a little taste of the lifestyle design work that I do with people specifically for the context of therapists who want to travel. So, you know, when I work with people, I always start with authenticity and just getting really as clear as possible about who we are um, from a level of discovering who we are authentically and then from a level of becoming who we want to be often based on our authentic values and mm -hmm. looking at how traveling fits into that and ultimately so that we can kind of not continue to bend ourselves over backwards to fit into a pre-prescribed life but so yeah. that we can you know stand solidly in who we are and build our lifestyle around that authenticity that's awesome Oh, I love it so much. And the, and the, the course you put together in the course is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I watched it a couple of times. It's really good. Oh, cool. <laughs> Appreciate that. It was fun to put together. I'm glad that you yeah. kind of gave me the motivation to, to do that. It was, it was yes. good. I loved it. Thank you for contributing. And thanks for coming tonight. I'll come back later in the comments and drop Andrea's information. If you guys want to find out more about her, um, her coaching stuff and her course that she has and just all of that information, I'll leave it for you. So you have that. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's fun to talk to you. I thank know you. You're, you're totally welcome to hang out if you want to, whatever you feel like doing is, is fine. <laughs> um, okay. I'll, thanks. I'll hop back over to the group and get off zoom, okay. but I'll, I'll keep listening in. Yeah. If, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, please drop them and she can come back and answer them too. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. Bye nice Janine. Hi. Hi. Oh, LP Washington's here. Hi, LP. Latanya, I love you. So glad to see you. <laughs> um, and everybody, we have Janine with us, Janine Jacobs Wolf. She's here. Um, she's wonderful. There's so many things I could say about her. We actually just traveled together to Nashville. We were roommates there, which was so fun. That's we had awesome. never met in, per in person, um, but we've known each other, you know, through Facebook groups or whatever for a long time, but we, we roomed together and we just had a blast. So uh, Janine, would you just tell them a little bit about you and your contribution to the course and just give them an idea. So if you guys have any questions while Janine's talking, drop them in the comments and we'll answer them. Okay. So I am, I'm an online solo practitioner, much like Kim. I got inspired by Amber Lida. Um, didn't even imagine I had been doing some online work um, for something that was, I was anticipating in my life that never came to be, but it didn't occur to me that I could actually do that as a full-time thing. And so um, I went um, fully online in 2019 um, which for those of us who did that, we were in just such a great position when the pandemic. Oh my God, I felt so lucky when the pandemic and I was like, yeah. thank God I'm already online. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm. But I went into solo practice um, in face-to-face -face brick and mortar in 2016. And I had been with a group, two different practices. And I was just um, thrilled to be in solo practice and completely unprepared for how lonely and isolated I was going to feel. And all of a yeah. sudden I've got this imposter syndrome coming in and I'm feeling like I'm questioning my clinical judgment and my skills. And so um, it really became apparent to me the need to have community and colleagues. So um, what solved it for me at that time was joining a clinical consultation group. Um, and that just really clarified for me that that was such an important part of the work we do, not doing this in isolation. So mm -hmm. what I contributed to the course is um, talking about how you can get peer support while you are on the road. And, you know, there's different ways of doing it. You can do it all in like Kim. Um, you can do it with me where I just dabble in traveling a little bit more, but because I can see clients while I'm um, traveling, then I can travel more than I would if I lost all of that income. And so kind of that hybrid model. Um, and so I just want to make sure that people are really clear about getting the support that they need. So my course, I, I use the analogy of a kite in the course and thinking about 
um, the traveling therapist as a kite and you have the freedom to move about and do whatever, do whatever you want, but you need to have that person holding the string down on the ground because mm -hmm. when things happen, you have a crisis in a case or you have a case you really need to process with somebody. Um, I use the image of the kite like hitting bad weather and it's kind of swirling out of control. Mm -hmm. And the person who flies a kite will know that if you reel the kite in, it's going to give it stability <laughs> So that it can stay afloat, keep doing what it's doing. And then when things settle back down, you can let it back out and it can continue doing its thing. And so to me, that was a really nice visual of what it can be like if you were a traveling therapist, but not being in isolation and not being somewhere and realizing, oh, shoot, I've got this really complicated case. And now who am I going to call? Who, who am I going to find to talk to? And so having that built in system for you so that you know exactly who you're going to call and you know exactly who's going to be available for you. And, and more importantly, I think getting regular consultation is so, so important anyway, because we grow and learn and connect on different levels. And um, so many good things can come out of having regular consultation with peers. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what are you, what are you guys doing right now for your social support? I mean, I know we got so isolated with COVID and those of you that are traveling or just working from home, like what are you doing for social support? I'd love to just pop some ideas in here in case people are struggling with that. Somebody posted earlier that loneliness was a big thing that they worry about. You know, they go traveling or all on, on their own, all by themselves. Um, Andrea, the person that was just here before I asked her when I met with her before, I was like, do you get lonely? Like, cause she lives like in this school bus, like all by herself. And she's like, I got lonely in my own home, <laughs> you know, when I was working, you know, so she, she's figured out how to manage that. And she has friends all over the country and she sees people. Um, but let's hear what you guys are doing. I'd love to, to know actually, um, yeah, let's see if anybody pops in my, for me it's my Facebook friends. I mean, I know that sounds just kind of weird or whatever, but I've developed some really close friendships with uh, people that I've met on Facebook, Absolutely. um, just chatting all day long. And like you said, the reeling them in, not really with cases so much anymore, but more like with this like side hustle stuff, the, uh, Janine and I are actually in a group together. It's like a launch management group because when you're launching products, it's so, stressful. It's like a, a roller coaster, really. Like one day it's like, okay, this is going great. The next day the tech fails. The next day, nobody's purchasing your product. The next day, a million people are purchasing. It's like this really, it's something I didn't bargain for when I started getting the, the multiple income streams, really. Yeah, me either. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just, just the tech support alone. We'll just <laughs> oh my God. Tell me about it. I think I, I sent out an email yesterday and it was like, how did I leave this whole sentence in that I didn't even mean to leave in here? Uh, somebody says it's been great to collaborate with other therapists consistently, super valuable. Oh, Andrea, she's back in the comments. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree with that. Uh, regular girls weekends with longtime friends. Absolutely. That's what Ann Farrell Leggett said. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's a big one for sure. I was talking, Cindy was in last night and I was like uh, reminded because we went to, we were in Colorado together a year ago. We were talking about like, it's so fun to travel with girlfriends. It's so different than with your husband or your boyfriend or your partner or whatever. Cause it's like, he doesn't like to do all the girl stuff I like to do. So right. Nashville would have been completely different if my husband and your boyfriend had been there. Totally. <laughs> no karaoke, no, no, no dancing all night. No. <laughs> no hanging out, sipping wine in the hotel room. That was super fun. Um, I mean, some of that, but not as much that you would do with your girlfriend. So, yeah. So, so, um, Let's see, we've got some other comments down here. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, Janine. So what are what are some ways you get support? I know that the peer consultation is so important. What do you do right now to get all your support? Yeah, I mean, personally, I have a wonderful group of friends locally that we get together. Um, I'm fortunate that most of them are couples that all actually like each other, which is hard to find. <laughs> and so that's yeah. been really nice personally. Professionally, yeah, I have met so many people through Facebook that that's where I go for the sort of fun, emotional support connection. Not so much. I mean, I know people there that if I felt like I really needed to process a case that I could, you know, reach out to, and I'm sure that they would be happy to do that for me. But it's just feeling 
um, connected and, and, you know, we know people all over the world who are therapists and it's just mind boggling because before Facebook and before all this technology, we never had that before. And just even understanding how um, therapists in different countries, their licensing and the requirements and the way they function and, and provide therapy is different. And so it's just been a really cool experience. I feel like my life has expanded so much. Yeah. But- therapist Facebook groups and getting to know like-minded therapists. That's so important for me. People that are willing to say, can we step out of the box and do it a little bit differently that this is what we're taught in grad school, but that's not really realistic to be sustainably doing this work. And so what are the ways that we can do this and um, have people say, yes, yes, of course you can do that, (laughs) you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And even in the, in the therapist Facebook groups, like we talk about this sometimes, it's like, they're not always safe places for support. So, you know, making sure you find the right place that can give you support that way. Find your like tribe of a few people that are really like-minded and can support you no matter what. Um, Super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Janine's doing this. um, Oh, this isn't part of her course, but she's doing the summer series right now. Do you want to tell them about that? Because I attended the first one the other day and I loved it. I was like, why am I not doing peer consultation? I mean, I only have like five clients right now. And I don't know if I, I mean, I probably need it, but I don't know if I really need it. But when I was in there, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I just yeah. loved it. Will you tell them what you're doing? Because you have two more. It's probably one of the scariest things I've ever done because, um, you know, as we know, people wanting consultation in Facebook groups, therapist Facebook groups don't always get treated kindly. And I get Mm -hmm. asked all the time, like, what do you talk about in consultation groups? What does it look like? Safety is a huge, important factor of my community and what everyone is looking for in consultation because you can't get vulnerable and really ask the questions you want to ask if you're afraid someone's going to judge you or shame you for some reason. And Mm so um, what I did was I set up a series of three live clinical consultations. We already had one. Um, We have one more in June and one more in July. And basically I've invited therapists. Um, Anyone who wants to join can come onto Zoom with us and I present a fictionalized case. Um, and, And the authenticity of what we're discussing was really important to me. And it took me a while to sort of wrap my head around how I could present uh, something that's a real issue that therapists face, but not compromise anybody's client or anyone's license. And so I just, I put together like, you know, created a, a, um, a client or clients with this type yeah. of thing that we might see. And we discussed it. I asked everyone to turn on their cameras um, because that's so important in establishing trust is being able to see each other's faces. We talked about language a little bit at the beginning and how to be supportive and curious and ask questions in a way that wouldn't make someone uncomfortable. The fact that someone might ask a question and they might get three different suggestions and one does not negate the other, that there are three different suggestions because it's three different therapists, likely with different orientations and modalities. Yeah. And so it was super fun just having the group do that and, and see people get more comfortable and open up. And um, it, it was a great consultation. And I'm, so, I was so nervous and I'm so excited I bet. to do the next two. <laughs> Oh, they're going to be great. It was, it was really awesome. Yeah. So we'll, we'll drop that down. If you guys haven't ever done a peer consultation uh, group and you want to know what it's like, this is a really cool way to do it. So you're you're not like all in, but you can kind of experience what it was like. I just thought it was super neat. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And there's two ways to participate. You can actually come on live if you want to be part of the conversation. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Streaming it into my Facebook group. So people who are a little more uncomfortable or want to see it first, they can watch it there. And then I also will have the replay available for a week. So the one from last uh, week will be expiring um, in a few days. So um, it's a good. Oh, it's still on there. Yeah. So people can yeah. watch that for a few more days. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, well, I'll come back and post or Janine, if you want to later, uh, we could post some stuff. Uh, LP says, I love the concept. I love the concept, Janine. I signed up. Yeah, Yay! that's awesome. <laughs> Kristen Kelly says, sounds very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really cool. And Janine actually runs a peer consultation membership. So that that's actually why I asked her to contribute to the course because I know that she's sort of an expert in this peer consultation stuff and helping therapists get support. Um, you you specifically curate the groups and put together um, combinations that you think are going to be super helpful, different theoretical orientations and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that's why I asked her to do the presentation because I wanted to, I felt 
strongly in the course about having that covered, you know, that, that consultation or just peer support part. Cause I know it's been so important for me, definitely, especially yeah. now digital nomad, you know, I, I don't really have roots, right. So I'm not like the, like nurturing relationships where I live. It's just more like this online space. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we talk about regularly in the groups is the toll of the pandemic and us finally recognizing, no one else recognizes that, but us owning the fact that we are first line responders. Okay. We are the people who are there and we are living through something we've never lived through something that all of our clients lived through before. This has been, you know, yeah. something brand new for us as therapists and it's taken a big toll. And so having those people to reach out to and say, gosh, this was just a really hard day. Like there wasn't something in particular, but mm -hmm. I just, you know, and, and I'm just struggling today and having those peers that can offer suggestions or talk through things that might be helpful or just say, you're right. It's terrible. It's awful, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. not just you, but we are, you know, we are doing the best we can, but it is a hard time and we'll just continue to support each other so we can make it through. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And, and that's for true. It's like, we've never been through anything like this as therapists, you know, like, how do we even, I mean, I know we've talked about it a lot, like on Facebook and stuff, but how do we even manage this? Our clients are going through the same crisis we're going through, you know, it's, it's been tough. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so Jen, uh, Jen Hyatt just entered into the, the waiting room. So do you want to keep hanging out Janine or do you want to um, I think I will hop over to the Facebook group too. This is so okay. fun. Thank you so much for having Thank me. You. Thank you for coming. Feel free to drop your information in there if you want to, so everybody can find you. I will. Okay. Thank you. And I can't bye. wait to share her course with you guys. Okay. Bye, Janine. Bye. bye. Okay. Let's see. Let me bring Jen in here. Hello. Am I? There we are. I was talking and you couldn't hear me. Oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, great. I'm so glad to have you here. We were just talking to somebody before you popped in. I'm just, I'm glad you're here. Um, so we're streaming live into the Facebook group right now. Um, so I would love if you would just tell everybody about yourself. I'm so excited to even be talking to you. I want to like catch up and hear how everything's going because I know you've had major things going on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where to begin? So when I uh, recorded the part of my course, I was still contemplating if I was going to be going where I am currently. Yeah. In Japan. So yeah. So I took the leap and I'm here now. So yeah. Oh my God. It, it, she said Japan. I don't know if you guys heard because it blipped for a second, but she's in Japan. She's living and working in Japan right now. Yes. Um, amazing. Oh my gosh. So what time is it there? Um, it is 7.45 a.m. here. <laughs> so I do a, predominantly my work in California. And so what I do is I do 7.45 minus four and then opposite of a.m. p.m. And then if I'm going East Coast, I add one, which really you just add one. So we're like, what is it? 6.45 there, 7.45 a.m. here. Well, 7.47 now, so. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. So Jen's contribution to the course is navigating time zones when you're living in other places, because that that has been the hardest part for me <laughs> is just trying to like coordinate my my coaching schedule with my simple practice schedule with whatever time zone I'm in uh, and with my clients that are in Virginia. So she's worked out this really cool system. And in the course, she, she does actually gives us two trainings on it, different ways to manage time zones. It's just amazing how you figured that out. Really. Um, it's mind boggling and it hurts my mind <laughs> to do it, mine too. <laughs> but I learned a lot because this isn't my first time living abroad. I lived in Italy before and traveled all around Europe, which I talk about in the course also. Um, yeah. so you learn a lot of tips and tools that is coming in very useful for me right now. And so um, I designed like this spreadsheet and it has like Hawaii, cause I work sometimes in Hawaii, um, Pacific, and then all the other time zones going across. And like literally for this, <laughs> I pull it up to check myself to make sure that I'm signing in on time. Cause I don't want to like no show. <laughs> yeah, so. totally. I have done that a couple of times. I've been off by an hour for sure. Yeah, you yes. know, with clients. Um, 
somebody just said, oh, Cheryl said, I lived and worked in Japan. Yes, Cheryl oh, did. Okay. Cheryl, I, we actually have a podcast episode coming out where she talks about like the culture in Japan and what she learned. And I'd love to talk to you some about that too, if you if you want to talk about it today. Yeah, um, and then Kristen Kelly says, ooh, I would love to live in Italy and Hawaii. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, I never lived in Hawaii. I visited Hawaii. Um, but as part of my work, and so I, I negotiate different um, practices. And so I have my private practice. I have a nonprofit that I run. And then I also joined a group practice as their VP of operations to help them with workflow and systems and metrics and payroll and anything you can think of. So yeah, I stay busy. And then I do supervision and consultations also for those who are wanting to start private practices. And so trying to navigate the different time zones within that yeah, it's mind boggling. Oh my God. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine. So how many time zones are you actually navigating right now? Okay, so I'm navigating California, uh, Hawaii, and then uh, the Midwest. So East. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what's it like living in Japan? Tell us. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so when I travel, I love the history, the people, the culture, architecture, like food. I'm a total foodie. So wherever I go like that, just like it brings me happiness because there's culture and history within the food. And so the people here are so like um, kind and generous and there's that language barrier. So I know like very few like survival words like konnichiwa, <laughs> sayonara. <laughs> All right, gotcha. Yeah. Let me see if I mess this one up. Go see, go say moss. <laughs> and you bow. I've never bowed so much in my life. <laughs> what <laughs> did the last one mean? The one you just said. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> was, nice. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's one I use multiple times throughout the day. And so my, um, my daughter who's 18, she's been into anime and manga. And so she's been studying the Japanese culture for years and years and years. And so oh. she's teaching me words. <laughs> so Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Yeah. And I guess we should say this is also part of your husband, right? He's military. Yes. Is that, so that's what took you guys there, right? Yes, and yeah. to Italy also. So he's a command master chief in the United States Navy. So he's wow. been out in uh, 23 years, so. Oh my gosh, <laughs> amazing. And what part of Italy was it you were in? I can't remember. Um, I was in, okay, so my husband was stationed in Grisiana de Aversa, which is like Southern Italy, but we lived in Avellino. Uh, Grisiana de Aversa, um, air quality, food. If you look up uh, the death triangle, <laughs> it's, oh. it's in the death triangle. And so, um, so air, food, and water was not a good quality. So we lived in Avellino instead. Wow. Oh my yeah. gosh. Where they had Ooh. fresh air wonderful water okay. <laughs> and, uh, food you could eat that wasn't toxic. <laughs> so. Oh my God. Well, that's important because <laughs> they have yeah. blue zones too, right? I'd never heard of a death zone. Yeah. It's the death triangle. So if you look it up, it's like toxic waste and it's like um, wow. illegal dumping of trash and they're burnt. They burn trash all the time. Something we didn't know before we moved there. <laughs> so wow. that was a nice surprise. The first night we got there, we're like, oh, we'll open up the windows because we stayed in a hotel. And then all of a sudden it's like, they started burning trash. And like, we were like, oh. <laughs> so oh my I'm like I don't think we're going to live near the base. So we're going to, we're going to go to Avellino instead. So it was about a 30 minute commute. And my kids at the time, cause I have four children, um, three of, well, actually all four of them are adult now. It's my last one just turned an adult in May. Wow. Ooh, I'm still getting used to it, obviously. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but a couple of them were still in school. And so we would make the, the travel every day. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Amazing. So, um, so tell everybody where you were Monday. <laughs> oh, I was, was in Monday? Disneyland, Tokyo. <laughs> Disneyland, Tokyo. Yes. How was yeah. it? Um, let's see, so I've been to Disneyland because I'm from California. Well, I'm from yeah. everywhere because I grew up military also. So, but what I consider home is California. And so it's a little different, but it has similarities. And so Pirates of the Caribbean is my favorite ride and it was open. Nice. So oh, I read, cool. it, read it a couple of times. The food is completely different. Um, they have like these little sandwiches. They have ramen there. Yeah. So they have popcorn, they have different varieties. So it was like white chocolate matcha, matcha everything here. Oh, wow. Um, curry. Oh, I saw and then that in your pictures, yeah. They had soy sauce. Oh, you saw my pictures. Yeah, you're on my Facebook. Yeah, with the popcorn, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I do Facebook and I do blogging to stay in touch with family and friends and like share my adventures so they get to live vicariously through me. So I love that. Well, I'll, I'll come back and drop Jen stuff in here too. If you guys want to follow her, because she's got the best pictures. I'm like, oh my God, look at all this different food. It's amazing. Oh, Shayla's here. Hey, Shayla. Shayla's coming. Is it tomorrow night? Shayla's a course contributor too. She'll be here tomorrow night with us. But she said, I love hearing this story. Oh, I know. Isn't it amazing? Yes. So, um, so what are, are there any restrictions in Japan? If you're, if you're working back in the United States, like licensing wise or anything like that, that you have to navigate? I don't, I don't think I've ever asked you that. Um, no, originally I thought of their restrictions, like boundaries where people could come to visit. That's where I thought you were going. I'm like, yes, oh, oh, yeah, we can talk about that too. <laughs> you can't come. The, the borders are closed until um, summer and they're opening it up to tourist groups. So um, as far as okay. restrictions, no, it is not regulated in Japan. So I'm able to fully have my online practice nice. and work with all the other practices I work with and I'm good to go. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's so good to know. Uh, Cheryl says, uh, Okinamiyaki Japanese pizza. Uh, am I pronouncing that right? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> I still practice. I'm someone who mispronounces like English words. So <laughs> yeah, I think Cheryl's pretty fluent. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. But, but I, I do understand Japanese pizza. I don't, I don't know. Is Japanese pizza different than American yeah. pizza? I haven't had it, but we did, um, it's called Taco House Yas. It's like Y-A-S. And it was, um, so Taco Bell has like this Mexican pizza they did away with, and they just brought it back to the States. It's kind of off topic, but related. And here they haven't caught up yet because we have a Taco yeah. Bell, place, right? And so we went off base to Taco House Yas. I think I'm saying it right. <laughs> I might be completely not saying it right. And it was like so much, so good. Like we want to go back. It's like one of our oh. top spots now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Oh my that gosh. To Japan to eat a Mexican pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Oh my God. Mexican pizzas were my favorite at Taco Bell before I had got celiac disease and couldn't eat there anymore. But yeah, I love a Mexican pizza. Uh -huh. Let's see. I'm just looking at some of the comments over here. Um, uh, lived and worked in Japan. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Shayla says, oh yeah, tomorrow night. Shayla will be with us tomorrow night. I'm excited about that. She's also a military spouse. Oh, nice. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. About military spouses is, um, like our family, like we help each other out. We always pay it forward. It's, there's a lot of support. So here in Japan, I'm living on the military base. When we were in Italy, we lived off base in the, what's called the economy amongst everyone. And so yeah. we were kind of missing that element. So this time we decided to live on base. And so I like, I have my military spouses and yeah, so That's it's good. Awesome. Yeah. Just before you came on, Janine Jacobs Wolf was in and she was talking about that, the, the importance of just like that peer support, you know, wherever you are, if you're traveling. So, um, yeah, that's really cool that you're, you've got those relationships, I guess you're building there mm -hmm. all over the yeah. world I have friends all over the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. I mean, Facebook has been great for that. Facebook, you know, it's got its downside, but like meeting people and just nurturing relationships has been really important for me too. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, what else do I want to ask you about? It's, it's almost seven already. Like time has flown by today. Yeah. I, I should have scheduled longer. I just did like these little 15 minute blocks with everybody, but, uh, anyway, I, I just want to say, I appreciate you contributing to the course so much because the time zone thing, I don't know about the rest of you guys, but it has just been a real learning curve for me just trying to figure out how to match my calendars and then coordinate with different time zones. So I appreciate the input you gave about, you know, how your system so that can help other people develop a system if that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Coordinating all the times and making sure you schedule your clients. Um, I use Google calendar as like my master calendar through Google workspace and I have the BAA. And so that's my master calendar. And so all my clients get their notifications from there. So. Yes. Yeah. And that's part of the system she goes over in there and yeah, it, it, I still need to do it. <laughs> I need to go back through your course. I need to go through your course and set it up that way because I'm still struggling with it. Simple practice does for those of you that just are in one um, practice time zone with simple practice, at least on the app, you can toggle it and it'll um, 
tell you your current time zone. If you untoggle it, it'll tell you your practice time zone. So I, that's how I manage my clients, at least just being in one time zone. I'm nothing like Jen is like three or four different time zones, but, um, mm-hmm. that's how I've managed it. Just a little side note of anybody here uses simple practice, mm-hmm. um, and Calendy. I use Calendy for, um, like my coaching clients and stuff. And they also adapt to your time zone if you're on the app and your phone. So you can see it both ways there. So that's worked for me so far, but I still like second guess myself like a hundred times. I'm, I'm like, is this the right time? I need to go back and check. Let me check this. Let me check this. Let me go look on my desktop, you know, and I, I just go back and forth with a little bit. So it is anxiety producing, you know, oh, um, no, just sure. putting that out there. Yeah. Yeah. I just recently used Calendly again. Um, normally I use it for like, I used to use it for um, scheduling like consult calls, like new clients, um, yeah. but I haven't taken a new client. I've been full for probably like since last yeah. summer. So, I hear um, you. but I just started using Calendly for interviews because part of, um, we just hired like up to, it was like around 15 people. And wow. so like the interviews, me trying to like schedule everybody's interviews in different time zones. I was like, here, here's the link. Calendly converts it over automatically and I don't have to like worry about it. So I just do it automatically go to my phone and then I would just show up for the interview when it told me to. And so I just took the the mind boggledness, is that a word? Out of it. (laughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for contributing. I really appreciate it. I'll I'll put some information in here if anybody wants to reach out to Jen, talk about Japan or um, follow her, follow her journey. I'll drop that in here for you. Thank you. And I can't wait to release the course and have everybody watch your trainings. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll see you later. Thank you. Okay. Bye everyone. Okay. Bye. Everybody. I can't believe it's seven already. My God, this time is just flying by. So anybody that's still here, do you have any questions about anything we talked about? Anything you want me to to touch on before we wrap up for tonight. Um, I want to, I want to drop some links real quick, just so you guys have these. Let me see here. Um, so I'm dropping the link for the dream life worksheet that I created and also the bingo board. If you complete one or both and turn them into me, you can email them to me, or you can uh, just drop them in the Facebook group, wherever you want, just post, make a post and share them. If you want to, if you feel comfortable and I'm going to add your name to the prize list because on Thursday night, you don't have to be present if you can't be there, but Thursday night, we're having like a happy hour where I'm just going to invite everybody into the zoom room with me. And I just want to hang out, you know, because I keep seeing in the Facebook group, everybody really wants to connect. And somebody posted about it today that everybody just wants to know where everybody's traveling to. Like, hey, can we meet up? Like, where are you going to be? How can we make a spreadsheet? How can we connect? And somebody actually started a spreadsheet in our group a while back, just like talking about, um, you know, where they're going to be traveling and, you know, the the dates, if you feel comfortable with that, I'd say go check that out. Um, I think it's pinned to the top of the group. I need to go look at that and see, but, but that's a, that's a great resource. And of that, you know, it really seems like there needs to be some kind of regular meeting where we can all just hang out in a zoom room as traveling therapists, um, as Janine was talking about where we can get support for one another, we can all connect together. Um, so that's what I'm doing Thursday night. It's going to be an hour and a half and I just want to hang out. I want to hear what you guys are up to. I want to look at our dream life worksheets, uh, bring your favorite beverage. And throughout that time, I'm going to be doing prize drawings. Um, let me drop the prizes in here too. So you guys know, oh, let me show you one actually. (laughs) Hold on this, these I've got, let me see. I've got five of these. These are luggage tags and they're traveling therapist luggage tags. Um, so I'm going to give these away for sure. It says work, travel, save, repeat. And it says the traveling therapist down here at the bottom. So, um, five of you guys, I'm going to draw your name and send these out to you in the mail. Whenever I can find a way to mail something (laughs) wherever we are, I'm going to send that out to you guys. And let's see what else. Let me drop the rest of the prizes here. We've got, uh, oops, that's not the prizes. That's the worksheet again. Let me go get that. So we've got that. We have uh, Nick Fuller. I don't know if you guys know him, but Nick uh, is, he runs iTherapy. He also has an SEO course 
and he's giving away an SEO assessment of your website. And he's also giving away an entry into his SEO course. It's a $500 value. So thank you, Nick Fuller, so much for doing that. Um, I think Andrea has her eye on that. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and the other prizes, uh, Cindy Gonsaski, she was here last night with us, but she is she runs the therapistboutique.com. So let me drop that for you guys. She's giving away a Therapist Boutique t-shirt, um, which I have about five of them. I think I said last night, they have the cutest little thing. One is like Namaste. I've got that. I've got a bunch from her. One says Sweetheart. Uh, there's all these. She gave me that one. I didn't buy that one. That was really sweet of her. And then Megan smith Connell. Let me drop her prize. Megan is giving away. Let me copy and paste this for you guys. It's hard to manage all this stuff at the same time. Um, Megan's giving away one of her Thrive School courses. So if you click on Megan's link, you'll see her Thrive School courses. Uh, she's giving one of those away. You could pick which one you want. She's got four of them that are really awesome. So check that out. And then I'm going to give away one entry into the Expert's Guide to Becoming a Traveling Therapist. So one of you guys will get the course for free. Um, if you're on the, the wait list or the newsletter list, we're sending out an email tomorrow to say that tomorrow's the last day for the, the early bird wait list. So make sure you sign up because it's a $60 savings. If you purchase within a 24 hour window and you're on the early bird wait list, you'll get like a special code and, um, uh, you get that discount. So I just want to drop that wait list too. If anybody's not on it, I hope you guys are. But that is going to be only open for a short time still. Let me get that for you. So I'm excited. I am glad to see you guys. I can't wait till tomorrow night. Megan smith Gunnell's is going to be here tomorrow night. And actually, I forgot to say this, but 4 p.m. tomorrow, Tamara Howe. I don't know if you guys know her. She lives in the UK. She's an international travel expert. She is going to come into the group at 4 p.m. tomorrow because she is in the UK, so she couldn't make the time zone work. It would have been too late for her to come in at 6 p.m. So um, Megan just said, yay, Kim, you're amazing. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> I just got distracted by your comment. Um uh, so tomorrow's going to come in at four tomorrow. We're going to do a little uh, talk around international travel, see if you guys have any questions. And, uh, you know, hopefully if you want to work in the UK over there, she's got some great tips about that. She also, this is so cool, you guys. She's giving a bump order to the course for her GD, GDPR paperwork. So that's basically like in, in you know, the UK over there, they've got like, it's like their version of HIPAA, but she has put together a private practice, a GDPR paperwork packet for anybody that's wanting to see clients in the UK or work in the UK. There are these GDPR um, compliance standards that you have to follow. So she actually gave a bump order to the course. It's uh, usually, I think it's like $297 and she's like giving it away for like $67 as an add-on to the course, all this paperwork. So that's really cool. But I want her to come in tomorrow also and talk about it a little bit and answer questions if you guys have that, just about what that even means, GDPR paperwork. I didn't even know until I knew tomorrow. So it's uh, probably going to be pretty helpful. So that's tomorrow at four. And then we've got Megan. At Smith Gunnell at 6.15 tomorrow night. And then I think 6.45, we have Shayla, right? Shayla, if you're still here at 6.45, I think. Um, both amazing people, contributors to the course. So we're going to just talk about stuff. If you've got questions you want to ask them, we can do that tomorrow night. All right. So I'm so glad you guys joined us for the second day of the Traveling Therapist Extravaganza. We have more uh, one more day tomorrow. And then Thursday, we've got happy hour. So I hope you guys will come six p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. Thanks for contributing. Bye.